Well, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's once again, we're riding with more. It is the afternoon because I've been waiting for it to dry up. I were going to go early this morning, but um, I didn't quite get the weather right. And uh, the roads were wet. But as you can see, I've left it till 12.50. And the roads are dry. It's nice and warm. And we're on the Africa Twin. Got a full tank of fuel. What more do you want? <laughs> I've still got the uh, squared off tyres on, but... I will be changing them probably at the end of September. I seem to have it in my mind to do that. And then I've uh, all October just to um, get them ready for uh, the North Coast 500 next April. Obviously, I guess. Hoping to get a few miles in between uh, now and then. Hoping to get several miles in between now and then on the good on the old girl, but on the old girl, not that old. Uh, just get them all better, get everything bedded in, and get it all prepared for the epic trip. Oh, the North Coast 500. With the Amigos and the Gringo. Where are we going today? I haven't got a clue. Not got a clue. Underneath the trees where we are at the moment, the road is wet. Very wet. I were tempted with a 250. But at the moment, this seems to be the go-to bike. Not saying that the two anything wrong with the 250, far from it. As I've said to you many times, any of the bikes stay and it's a 250. But I do seem to be going for the Africa Twin. If there's a went out the last run, as you know, I still haven't put all that video on, actually. Still some left of that. I may have put it on, may not. We'll see. I'll be cleaning this little lady tomorrow, no doubt, at some stage uh, after today's outing. It's going to get hacky. And we are making our way up to go up end a little. I'll be going that way, but I just haven't got a clue. I'm making up as I go along. I've nowhere in mind, nowhere at all. Cash in my pocket, should I need something to eat or drink? And money for fuel, should I need to fill up again? I don't know how long I'll narrate for. As I say, I've still uh, some of the fares of trip to put up, but... Just haven't got around to doing it. I was on the live feed yesterday, that went really well. Proper enjoyed that. Uh, of course, you guys who join me on the live feed all made it worthwhile and more pleasurable. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? I mean, the weather hasn't been uh, particularly favourable to us bikers for summer. Not at all. I mean, it's fair to say we've had a share rain, fair rain in July. It's not uh, not been one of the best, but I hope you enjoyed that yourself last night. Just a bit of fun, as I say. Just to uh, put something up once a month. Have a natter. You know, come on and have a natter with each other. No, no worry with that. Good to have Sprocket on. 
James was noticeably missing, and he's, as was Derek, and Beste. That's uh, James is better off. However, no worries, we've all got things to do. Derek uh, Dog cut it poor, and he had to take it at vet a couple of hundred notes later. Tell you them vets, I know, you, I know, I know you need them, but uh, quite expensive. I've always said that about the vet, not, well, not that it's expensive, but, uh, wee! <laughs> A little moment going over that grid, then I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> Bit of chatter and the back went slip slightly. <laughs> um, yeah. I've always said that about the vet. The vet, the dog's going, your pet, dog, cat, budgie, whatever you have, goes in feeling ill. And uh, with a good bit of wind behind it and everything's alright, it comes out feeling better. You going feeling all right, <laughs> come out feeling mighty ill. <laughs> yeah, we're on to the uh, 60s now, and it's the open road and it's bone dry. Which is what we like in it, ladies and gentlemen. We don't like any of the wet stuff. Absolutely stunning up here. You may be asking at this point, why the hell do you want to move then? <laughs> For those who's been uh, following the vlogs, we're in the process of maybe moving. It's not going too well at the minute. And uh, looks like the buyers aren't going to buy. So that consequently means we can't buy the property we've found. And if it all goes falls on its backside this time, that's me done. I'm stopping where I am. There's no wrong with house. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It was just maybe something sprocket and I concocted up over lockdown. Sounded like a good idea. And uh, yeah, that's how it came about, I think. And it would be nice, don't get me wrong. But. We don't have to move, you know, we're not not moving for any reason, purely for a change. And maybe, you know, I think, it, well, it were Ray, Ray said, if it's meant to be, it'll not pass you by. And, uh, yeah, good saying is that, if it's meant to be, it won't pass you by. So, um, that's the plan. We are uh, we just say we don't have to move, so no great shakes. We uh, sprocket now. I thought all the Costa shops was open these days. Uh, we proven wrong yesterday. Went over to Accrington. For those who know Accrington, there's a drive in there, but it's also a cafe at the back. You know, you can drive in, get a coffee, or you can go and sit in. So Sprocket now went to the sitting side. Manager came out and said, no, it's only driving. I went, all right, I said, I've seen some costas open. He said, well, this isn't like so. So we nipped down to Accrington. There's one down centre there for you, no Accrington. And... Uh, that were open, so we called in there and asked a the question. How come some are open, some are shut? And, they, and what he said was, the, guy, the lad very chatty. Uh, we're just trialling it at the moment in several shops, see if it's viable, you know, see if it's uh, going to make a do for us to get the staff in that we need to open it. Um, we're in a bad way, aren't we, really? You know, I didn't think it. It hadn't sunk into me how the situation, what we're in, it's it's dire. And I don't want to look at be a, a grumpy, mourning, 
vloggen. It's not my. Um, it's not what I want to be. I want to be upbeat and happy and. But this uh, Corona malarkey. It's not good. I was watching TV this morning. I didn't get the full story, so. Um, I could be a million miles off here. But I heard what I heard. It was a coach firm. And uh, I don't know how this coach firm uh, operated because I, I didn't watch it all. But she, the lady who was uh, owns the coach firm, is losing £40,000 per month. And she's saying she can't sustain it. Well, I'm not surprised. I don't think anybody can stay and sustain 40 grand a month going out the back sack. But it sounded like some of the drivers bought the buses or bought into the firm. This is where it's a bit grey, so... However, the, what I'm about to tell you, the figures are right. And they buy the bus, and then obviously they get the money. But the bus, the one of the guys, he... Because uh, the buses aren't running due to Covid. The guy who bought the bus uh, owed £150,000. Well, it weren't a bus, it was a coach. Let's get it right. H owed £150,000 on the coach. The finance company, because he wasn't paying, came and took the coach off him because he wasn't paying. And they, obviously... The finance company want the till. So, what did they do with the coach? They sold it at auction and got the princely sum of 75 grand for it. He's led me past. 75 grand for the coach. Owing, so that meant he was still owing 75,000 pounds. That money didn't get written off, and they're coming after him now for the 75 grand that the coach fell sh shortfall. So he, consequently, has gone bankrupt because he can't afford the 75 grand. And all this is because of Covid. It's wrecking lives. You know, and uh, <laughs> over the past few weeks, I've been a bit down as you may have known, because I haven't been on. And when you put things in perspective, you know, it's not... Sprocket and I aren't that bad. <laughs> things aren't that bad at all. When this guy is, is, is bankrupt, lost his livelihood, no job, slung out all because of Covid. And, that, and that's just one incident. How many others is there like it? And uh, they were saying they, they want the government to step in and help them out. But how much can the government sustain at the rate it's shelling out? I don't know. Somewhere along the line, there's going to be a, a, a what's the name, isn't there, where they want the, the money back. You know, they got to get it back. Who's going to pay it? I'll tell you who's going to pay it. Anybody who's working. Anybody who's earning a, 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 a bob or two. But how can they, you know, because of uh, the debt they're going to get in. It's a spiralling, spiralling problem that's, uh, at the moment, not get, no sign of getting better. Anyhow, tomorrow looks a cracking day. If August the planet, it'll be a scorcher. Weekend's looking dry. Uh, the wind's changing. I've noticed that the wind's turning around, so it's not going to be as warm at weekend. So bear that one in mind, but it's looking dry. Which is all we can ask for, isn't it, us motorcyclists? In summer, dry. Well, dry does me. So, no doubt I will be out uh, maybe Sunday. Well, probably will be Sunday.
unless I fancy him. Chris Blackburn, one of the lads, he's asked me to go out on Saturday. But uh, if you're watching Chris, I'd really like to, but I don't think I'm going to get away with it. We're going today. I'll certainly not be going tomorrow. It's going to be too warm. It's looking like Sunday for me. But uh, thank you for the kind offer. We just don't seem to be able to get it together. I asked Chris if he wanted to come today, but he's uh, he's been off holiday. And I thought he were on holiday till weekend. Anyhow, he's had to go back to work today, would you believe? And during his week off, he's only had managed to get out one day. And that, I think that was the day I went, in, I went out. But I hadn't any plans to go out that day. So I couldn't arrange nothing. I'd set off from coming this way and I didn't even know we're coming. <laughs> now, the decision is cow crap or, or, or to Bentham. I could go to Bentham, couldn't I? And have a look, uh, see what's about wildlife. We haven't been over that way for a bit anyhow, so it's uh, be nice. Let's go and have a look at see what's going on. Or I could go out trough. Do you fancy going out trough? You tell me. Where do you fancy? Cow Crack Lane, Bentham Trough. Let me know. I think I'm favouring Bentham at the minute, purely because I haven't been that way for quite some time and I'd like to see uh, see what it's like. Having said that, I do enjoy cake crap. Mind you, this time of year there might be some... Uh, where it got its name from? <laughs> Spread all over the road. The road just tightens here slightly. bit narrow. If you're riding with a few here like you probably go around there a bit faster but uh, I've no need to today I'm on my own. So I'll just take it nice and gentle. Yeah so yeah That's where we are so far, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't moved. We're not looking like we're not going to move. Looking like it's all going to fall on its backside. It'll cost me a few hundred quid. But in the grand scheme of things at this moment in time, it's a strange, strange world. A strange, strange world. What we said we'll do if we stop, we're going to um, just do a few jobs, you know, change it, run the new run. Really, honestly, there's not a lot to do. And we'll be doing it for purely for me and Bev. Maybe changing colour or something. I'm going to go this way because uh, I'm going to go this way. You know, there's no uh, spoiling to, for any work to be done, but... Uh, We're going to crack on and do a few bits and bats and change this, change that. Change to the... You can never be too sure, can you, these tight country lanes? Look, see? So, I'm going to take this corner gingerly. All clear. Sod's low. Did you go howling round? There'd been a big bloody tanker there, wouldn't there? Milk tanker. Upwards and onwards. Daughter's come up today with uh, new child, grandchild, Pippa. And uh, sprockets. Full of love for little in at the minute. And... Uh, if I know Sprocket, she'll be uh, 
Avul yine be be. Az avul be fare bene tom. Da ben ne swam. Catch it out, that little girl. Go around there a bit uh, spirited and the tanker coming down, you're going to go splat because there's just nowhere to go. I'm glad I've left it till now before I came out because uh, the road is damp in places but on the whole the centre as you can see it's dry so we're good to go and the uh, plenty of warmth and I think it's going to be one of them balmy nights tonight where um, it's going to be warm right through the night I've been watching the rain and there is rain about but I think it's on its way up uh, to the uh, Scotland borders hopefully so um, I don't think I'll be seeing any more of that stuff today. Oh yeah, lovely bike. Comfy, big, soaks up everything. Torque. As I say, you haven't got the top end, but going up these roads, you don't need the top end. I brought a, a, a subject up last night. Um, the Isle of Wight's doing a TT next year. Is it eight and a half mile race? Is it eight and a half mile? Don't quote me on that. But it's going to be speeds of up to 200 mile an hour in the street, same as a TT. And I really, really, really fancy it. Um, I've mentioned it to Sprocket in passing. You know, like, I know somebody who went to TT. It, in fact, the guy who uh, fixes my car, MOTs it. Well, he does do when it's out of that service warranty thing. I mean, at a minute. Any other car I've had uh, MOT'd, he MOT's it. And he bought, just purely for the um, TT week, a camper van and he drove it over and he paid for a month to park it up on the site so he drove it over parked it up and came home carried on working and went back over for TT and it was cheaper actually cheaper doing it that way didn't stop in the camper van he came back until the TT were on and he went over stopped in the camper van uh, for the TT he brought the camper van home because he's a garage and knows what he's doing um, no was what to pay and what not to pay and this that until he resold it probably for the same money yeah, as he paid for it so therefore he had uh, he went over to TT, stopped in in the month, brought it back and sold it for the same sort of money so that's it's all right when you can do that but I can't but what I was thinking if we still got caravan it's go over for a month me and Sprocket it's in October I believe and hopefully, fingers crossed, hope to God this Covid has bloody gone away. It's not good, is it? Uh, Sprocket and I were hoping to go to Australia again in January. My other niece, who's out there, is, she's getting married now and she's asked us to go, but uh, she's in the West, West Australia, Perth. And they're very, 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 very strict because they haven't got any there at the moment. They have in other parts of Australia, but uh, Perth is really strict. And we've only got six months. I rung, um, contacted uh, Airways up, and I said, have you any policies for, uh, you know, if we book and then cancel? If we book the flights and then cancel, what's, what's your policy? I said, it only runs till this December so if you book the flight and didn't go you lose your money I thought well that's not a you know it's about one and a half grand for flights there and back 
so that's um, it's not worth the risk can't afford that you know to throw away so and I can't see you know in six months this malarkey calming down any unless of course there's a medical vaccine brought out that uh, all singing all dancing and I really can't see that either but you never know so moving on the Isle of Wight in October is a very uh, interesting, very interesting, it's really interesting, Matt, to the point where I can't stop thinking about it. Um, and I'm going to stick my neck out and, uh, Sprocket hasn't said anything yet, I'm going to stick my neck out and say I'm going. <laughs> I'm, we're going. I made a decision. Isle of Wight for TT. And not only that, it's the first TT Isle of Wight's had. So being at the first, t you know, first road race, TT road race, it, 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 it won't be, it's not like winning lottery, is it? But it's, it's summit. Anyhow, a lot of water to go under the bridge with them. A lot of water. Look at that scenery, guys. Oh, breathtaking. Breathtaking. We're coming down into the village itself. Into Slaidburn. And the sun's coming out. Ain't a bad thing, is it? Get down into a 30, of course, and I was doing less than 30 anyway. Just uh, meander through this village. Cafe's open. Enough said about that. That particular cafe. Chairs are there, don't loan. All's good. Well, it's not chairs, it's benches. <laughs> My eyes. My, that's with, me, that's with me glasses on. I did the Covid test yesterday, it's got picked up today. Mentioned somebody about the box. Have you got a box? I never saw a box. See, it should be in a box. Well, it's not. It's in a plastic bag. He went, right, fair enough, took it. And I'll know the results. In about a week, and that tells you if you've got COVID, coronavirus, which I know I haven't. Well, I don't think I have, because uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not been uh, no temperature, no, not rough. But I'll tell you that test. Oh dear God, it's not the best. You got to touch your tonsils with a swab. Well, every time you stick a swab in your mouth, it makes you sick. You start throwing up. So I got Sprocket to do it, which made it worse. She couldn't stand still, she was nearly wetting herself. You need one of them things that you put on your tongue when you go, ah, you know what I mean, them wooden spatulas. If you had one of them, it would be a bit better, I would imagine. But I couldn't stick my tongue out, well, my, got, my tonsils poked. It's impossible. Every time you stick your thing in your mouth, you pull your tongue back in, it's defensive. And then you've got to shove it up each of your nostrils, same, same one as you've had in your trap. It's a good job it didn't do the way around up your nose first and then in your trap. <laughs> Won't be so many doing that, would they? Eee, slow down, mate. Lady. Yeah, so I'll know that in a week. Sent for some ink for computer, isn't that, dear? Oh, dear God. 30 odd quid for two bits of ink. And that's all because of this moving malarkey. Anyhow, I've photocopied and uh, got the deeds and I've made a pack up now. Everything's in the pack. 
that you need to uh, sell your house. It's all there, so should anything happen to me, Sprocket's in a position now where she just needs to pick the pack up. I've had one of them uh, surveys done for the um, heat energy. I think we come out C, A, B, C. He said you can't do any more to the to the whole house other than um, get a wind farm or uh, solar panels up. He said you've got everything in place, you know, all LED light. You've got to have over, I think it's 80% of your lights LED, which ours are. Uh, cavity wall insulation, loft insulation. I said, is that loft insulation? Thick enough. He said, thick enough. He said, you're about four times over the limit that you need to be. He said, he won't do it any harm. He'll only do it good, but... <laughs> he said, you're way over to what you need to be. Thought, well, that's good. Keep the heat where it's intended. I got uh, government were doing a grant, and I got the grant to come and do loft with insulation. When they finished, I went up and had a look. I thought, bloody, it's not done in that. It's right, right thin, it were. So I went out and bought a rate more and did it myself over the top. And that's why it's so thick. I've left gaps right in the edge for uh, ventilation and uh, breathability. Shall we have a minute up? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Minutes stood up. Lovely, beautiful, beautiful countryside. As I said, to you, I've got no problem really. Have when you put things in perspective. I know it's on your mind all the time. It's not only that house move. There's other things going on in his life. <laughs> Normal. Well, not normal. <laughs> it's never normal in Morphe world, trust me. And it's a combination of everything. And everything getting on top, you know, dragging us down. So, um, so I came to a standstill yesterday and I thought, well, I can't do anything about it. So what's the point in worrying about it? I can't do anything. It's, it's out of my hands. It's in everybody else's hands. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting on other people to make the move and do this and do that and do the other. So, Sprocket and I have come to the conclusion that's it, we've had enough. So we're going to walk out into the sea and uh, keep going until we're no longer above water. Sprocket agreed to do that. And then she said, hang on a minute, you're taller than me. <laughs> so we've scrapped that idea. <laughs> on account, Sprocket weren't happy with that one. <laughs> uh, now then, sir, are you going to let me pass, kind gentleman of the road? Could you slow down here and just let me nip through? No, no, <laughs> not on your Nelly. If he was in a car, would you let the motorcyclist pass if there was just one? I mean, obviously, if there's like 30 or 40 of them, well, I'd still pull him, mate. Eh? Perhaps it's being a motorcyclist, always letting us go. Kind gentleman. Thank you! Hi, uh, thank you. Very kind of you. Must have been uh, listening to what I was saying. You haven't watched Morphe. Morphe rides again. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers again, once again. Thank you all very much. Thanks for sticking with me during the lean periods where I haven't been putting nothing up. As I said, I have been out and I've done films, but I haven't put them up because I, it was terrible in the morning. In fact, Bob, Diversion Bob says it rhymes. Morning, Morphe rides again. 
Morning Morphe rides again. Wait, look at that. I'm not morning when I see that. What a beautiful gift sight is. Beautiful, beautiful gift. Look at that. Oh, yeah. 